Good morning, everyone, and happy Valentine's Day. My name is David, and I'm recording today from Sunburst Sanctuary. The topic today is divine love and charity, and there's a quote that goes with the topic. The easiest way to God is through love and devotion. And this is from Ananda Mayama, who was a saint who lived in India pretty much in the 20th century. She was born, I believe, in 1896 and um, lived into maybe 1981. And she was a complete expression of divine love. People would come to her just to sit with her and receive her blessing. So people like this come to the planet to show us that it is possible to have that full awareness of our connection with divine spirit and, and that wonderful divine love. In honor of Valentine's Day, I thought I would start with a couple of quotes that um, have to do with partnership. The first one, true love is when you touch someone with your spirit and in return they touch your soul with their heart. And the second one, a true spiritual partner is one who encourages you to look deep inside yourself for the beauty and love you've been seeking. A true teacher is someone who helps us discover the teacher within ourselves. And that, that quote was from Thich Nhat Hanh. The first one was anonymous. I couldn't find it. An original on that. So there's, as we know, there's um, different levels of consciousness. And <clears throat> in turn, there's different uh, levels of, of love as well, or different uh, expressions of love. And in on Valentine's Day, when we when we think about love, we, we think about the love between, um, between partners um, who uh, have fallen in love with one another and committed themselves to loving each other for the rest of their lives. And uh, this is something that uh, is experienced quite often on this planet. It's, um, it's pretty uh, necessary for the uh, promotion of the species that we come together through love and procreate and, and send forth into the next generation divine love to be expressed and to once again to find unity and to, and to continue on. But there are different levels of love or different expressions of love that we can experience within our own hearts. And it's uh, it's like our hearts are also evolving along on the spiritual path as we evolve. And as our hearts open, we begin to feel that wonderful flow of divine spirit. And it's one of the first um, things that helps us recognize that we are on a path that is helping us grow and, and find unity within ourselves. I wanted to read from um, one of Norm Paulson's writings on the virtue of charity. Um, today's topic, as I mentioned before, is divine love and charity. And <clears throat> he writes, charity is a realization that springs forth from deep within you that it is better to give than it is to receive. The true adept practicing charity will quickly give away to a just cause. 
Jesus, observing the coming Aquarian age, taught this Aquarian doctrine to all those who could receive it and imitate the virtues of his life. Remember, in this life on earth, you really own nothing. At best, you may be only, a good, care, may be only good caretakers for a short period of places and objects entrusted to you. Yes, in the end, even your body is not your own, but belongs to the life forces that created you. He goes on to say, True charity is the willingness to lay down your own life forces to, to serve spirit, to give of yourself and your time in service to others without conditions attached. Love, true love, is charity flowing forth from the beloved, I am that I am, passing through your body and into others' souls and the creation around you. Yes, spirit is charity, always giving, only that we love him, her, in return. Charity is the creative cause and concern for all that lives, the heart of all creatures, the mother of all species. Charity is the act of sharing and knowing that all life is one with your own, the nurturing nature of divine spirit. I read this passage a couple of weeks ago, and something just really um, hit home for me was the line uh, where he says, love, true love, is charity flowing forth from the beloved, I am that I am, passing through your body and into other souls and the creation around you. Well, first of all, that really combines well the topics of divine love and charity. Norm is saying that charity is divine spirit's love flowing through us. That's, that's a charitable act upon the whole um, soul of the universe flowing forth its love through an act of selfless charity constantly. Um, I heard someone say once if, if a spirit thought about themselves for one minute, everything would disappear. Spirit is always thinking and always projecting positive images out into the creation. And here we are sitting in these beautiful bodies with the ability to find our way back to that divine connection. So in thinking about what is the what are the things that we can do to to really have the most impactful charitable impression on the on the world as individuals um, I just came back to this idea that we are uh, we are designed in a way that we can become clear conduits in, in order to be able to express the divine love that's flowing forth constantly. And the, the broader our understanding or the deeper our realization, then the more we have to offer. And this is what Norm was talking about. And he used to say that our little cup that is, is our being, uh, it can only hold a cup full, but we have the opportunity to expand the size of the container through our devotion and through the practice of meditation we can expand to the point where we connect fully with the ocean of life and ocean of love that exists around us.
One of the sayings that we're probably all familiar with is charity begins at home. And so what, is, what does that mean exactly? Um, I heard someone say once, well, I, I don't think it means that you amass um, great wealth just for yourself so that you can have a beautiful home full of all the furnishings. It's more of a deeper message than that. And what is a true charitable act for ourselves? And I believe that it's giving ourselves the opportunity to expand our conscious awareness. That we are able to love ourselves enough that we take the time to sit quietly in meditation in the silence of our own inner temple and receive the deeper truths to listen for the, the deeper, greater understanding that we are all capable of attaining. Or that we take the time to go for a walk in nature and just observe the beauty and the love of divine spirit giving of itself continuously as we see the, the new plants spring forth and we see the trees with new growth sprouting forth. And we see the, the mother deer and her fawn bound by, by love. <laughs> Divine love is constantly expressing itself. And we are a big part or an, uh, an integral part of that expression here on this planet. If we can increase or expand our awareness, it puts us in a position to be able to more charitably offer that divine love that flows through us and have an impact on the consciousness of the planet. Our souls are, in a sense, like passengers that accompany us through uh, the incarnations of life that, that we experience. And soul awakening or self-realization is when the soul becomes aware of itself completely within our bodies and its connection with the divine source. And when that happens, the soul no longer becomes the passenger, but starts to become the driver of this vehicle, of this, of this bodily temple. And at that point, the ego, which has been in the driver's seat, becomes, in, in essence, a partner with the soul. The ego also evolves. The, the self-conscious ego is able to evolve and express these higher concepts of, of divine love and divine realization. And the ego, it is said, becomes the greatest servant of the soul when self-realization happens. And we are in a position now where we can, we can look at ourselves and we can ask ourselves, who's in charge? Who's in charge right now in this moment? What is happening in this moment and how am I responding to it? And if we are responding out of love and kindness and in a spirit of, of charity towards others, then we can rest assured that that conduit of connection between our soul and our, and our minds is intact. I guess in, in summary of, of that idea, um, the greatest gift that we can give ourselves is to love ourselves and be charitable 
towards ourselves and give ourselves the time, take the time in our busy lives to meditate and have opportunities for self-reflection and to have fellowship and association with others who can help support our, our divine endeavors that, that we all are, are seeking within. So let's take this time now to meditate together and to realize that we are literally giving ourselves an act of loving charitable kindness when we do this. And to practice as we inhale, we can practice on our inhalation offering as a charitable act all of our love back to Divine Spirit as an offering of love and, gra and gratitude. And when we exhale with our exhaling breath, we can imagine that we are receiving this new divine love back into our bodily temples, being rejuvenated and uh, given the opportunity for expansion of our own consciousness. So join me now, if you will, for a quiet period of meditation. And afterwards, I plan on reading a poem and we'll also have a beautiful song to end the service.
Welcome back from your meditation. I hope you had a, a nice, deep, loving experience within your soul, within your body, within your mind. As I was sitting here meditating, <clears throat> I was thinking a little bit about the men who are in the, in the background of, of this video. Over my left shoulder is Paramahansa Yogananda. And over my right shoulder is Norm Paulson. And Norm was a, a disciple of Yogananda's back in the late 40s and early 50s. And Norm went on to found Sunburst, the uh, community and property where we are where we are now. And something that Norm um, emphasized when he was with us here was that each of us has a divine connection personally that can be um, increased and can be drawn on directly. And he was always uh, insistent that we never refer to him as our guru or even as our teacher, which is just another name for guru. He wanted to make the point that as we move in to what he was speaking of earlier, the Aquarian age, that each individual has the opportunity to make that inner connection on their own. Now it helps to have people around you who are also seeking. And it really helps to have people around you who have had some level of realization. In Norm's case, he had Yogananda. And Yogananda truly was his, his teacher and helped facilitate divine awakening within him. And Norm helped facilitate divine awakening in some who were around him as well. But he was very clear to emphasize, each one of you, no matter where you are and who you know or you don't know, you have the opportunity through your own efforts to make that divine connection, to have cosmic awakening and realization within your soul. So we have other pictures of teachers in our temple as well on the walls. And for me, I, th I think of them kind of like the pictures that we might have in our homes. Of our, of our relatives. We have those pictures there because we love them and because we honor them. But for the most part, we don't worship them. We are grateful for what they brought forth to allow us to come into this world. And when we look at, or when I look at the pictures on the wall here, and I see these dynamic individuals who brought God realization to the world. I am so grateful and so honored to even be aware of them. And uh, I know that they, along with many others in the spirit world, are available to support us in our efforts. And these efforts that we make will bring us to a direct realization, direct experience, one way or the other, of Divine Spirit. I'm going to read a poem in honor of Divine Love, which is part of the topic today. And it's a poem I've read before, so you may have heard it, but I love it so much. And I just think it, it, um, it sings to my heart, and I hope that you find it helpful as well. The poem is by a man, a Persian 
uh, one of the Persian poets from, I'm not sure which century, very old. Um, his name is Ibn Arabi, or Ibn Arabi. I'm not really sure. It's called The Love Religion. The inner space inside that we call the heart has become many living scenes and stories. A pasture for sleek gazelles, a monastery for Christian monks, a temple for Shiva dancing, a Kaaba for pilgrimage. The tablets of Moses are there, the Quran, the Vedas, the Sutras, and the Gospels. Love is the religion in me. Whichever way love's camel goes, that way becomes my faith, the source of beauty, and a light of sacredness over everything. I want to thank everyone for joining us today, for viewing this video. I hope it's been helpful to you and you've found some inspiration. And peace be with everyone viewing this video and with everyone across the planet. Might everyone feel the deep, deep love and peace that is their divine birthright in the heart of their soul. Thank you. And the one you long for is on the way And the one you long for is on the way Prepare your earth, keep watch your sky It's a cloud by day, it's a star by night Heaven is on the way on the way, heaven is on the way, heaven is on the way. It'll come to us in a flash of fire and settle in like gentle rain and finer still. A soothing mist of understanding and sacredness, illumination. I knew you'd come. Heaven is on the way. Heaven is on the way. Heaven is on the way. Heaven is on. The way.
is on the wing. Heaven is on the wing. Heaven is on the wing. And the one you long for is on the way. And the one you long for is on the way. Prepare your earth, keep watch your sky. It's a cloud by day, it's a star by night.